Hey guys, it's Rachel with Be Healed Dog Training and I'm gonna take a couple minutes just to talk about how to stop fence fighting. I've got an example here for you with my own personal dogs engaging in fence fighting and being corrected for it and showing you what the results are afterwards. So I'm staying at my parents' house currently. I'm visiting them in South Carolina. They have a fenced in backyard and they have neighbors on um, two sides of them that have dogs where they can see each other directly through the fence. And then also on a third side with a privacy fence um, and even then, sometimes the dogs will try to fence fight there. So what's fence fighting? Fence fighting is when you've got dogs on either side of a fence, and if you've seen it, you know how incredibly obnoxious and awful it is. The dogs are running the fence line, barking, lunging, growling, going ballistic. And that's exactly what happens when my own personal dogs, when we visit my parents' house in South Carolina. We don't have a fence where the dog can come right up to the fence and they can get that close to each other. So this is a problem that when I come and visit my parents, I've had to address. So uh, point being, even if you have highly trained dogs, you still can have situations that come up that you have to address in your training. And it doesn't have to be a big deal. If you follow my stuff, you know I'm um, a huge advocate of remote collar training, so this was a really simple fix. Uh, it, literally, it literally took seconds. So all I do to correct fence fighting, remote collar, collar on the dog, turn that collar all the way up to 100, let the dogs out. If the dogs go to fence fight, they get corrected all the way at 100 with the button held down for two to three seconds. Now a lot of times people say, oh my gosh, that sounds horrible, I can't believe you do that, and you're gonna see in the video how not big a deal it is. Now, if I corrected my dogs for non-compliance, you know, with a command, I've got a cat joining me, sorry. This is my parents' cat, Mickey, say hello, Mickey. Um, but like, if I tell my dog to down and my dog doesn't down, I'm not gonna correct them at 100 for two to three seconds. So I don't want you to sit here and think that whenever I talk about a remote collar correction, this is what I'm talking about. And this is what I love about remote collar training. You've got this whole um, range of levels that you can work in depending on the situation. Fence fighting, the dog is up here. I know you can't even see my hand right now. That's where the, dog, the dog's brain is. Make it get down. You've got to get on top of that. And if you correct too low, if you're afraid to go all the way to 100 on the collar, which by the way, you're not going to injure the dog. It's a muscle contraction. I use a mini educator. It works like a TENS unit. Um, a level 100 is a very, very strong muscle contraction. I'm not sending electrical currents through my dog's body. I'm not going to like harm their heart. They're not going to drop and fall and have a seizure. Like people have crazy things in their minds about what a remote collar correction looks like. And that's exactly why I wanna make this video and show you is you almost can't even tell. If I didn't tell you that they were getting a remote collar correction, it would look like magic. <laughs> like the dog just suddenly stops fence fighting, okay? It's not a big deal. But if you are correcting this, get that remote collar up high because if you correct too low, you're going to potentially escalate the dog further. So definitely don't wanna do that. Um, but that's why this is such a simple fix. Dog fence fights, dog gets a very uncomfortable correction, dog stops fence fighting and then we move about our business. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the video of the first time I corrected this. The neighbor's dogs were out. There are two of them. They're very loud, they're very obnoxious, they're very aggressive at the fence as well. Um, my dog's also loud and obnoxious and aggressive, aggressive at the fence until we fixed it, and we fixed it in seconds. So go ahead and watch this video, and then I'm going to have the next video that shows them, um, I think in the video I said yesterday, it was technically two days later because the dogs weren't out the day after. Two days later, my dogs got a chance to meet their dogs at the fence. Um, and actually the first time it happened, I didn't have my phone on me. I was out playing fetch with Belle. Their dogs were suddenly let out of the house. Belle went to try to fence fight. I had my remote on me. I corrected immediately. I didn't have my camera going, so I missed it. But what I did is I then brought the dogs in and let them hang out in the house for a few minutes and then let them back out and you can see what their reaction is. So take a look. What you'll see here is that the remote collar correction is not a big deal, but it's highly Break. effective. Dogs are released to go outside, go after the neighbor dog, acting ridiculous, and correct it. And it's over. I'm going to slow that down for you in just a moment so you can see exactly when they were corrected. And honestly, ideally, it's better to correct the behavior before they're running the fence. If you have the ability to catch it earlier, um, it's better to correct them. The reason I didn't was specifically for the sake of creating this video so that you could see 
how easy it is to staff them even if they're already engaged in fence fighting. So if your dogs are in the backyard and you're doing something in the house and you hear it going on, as long as you've already got your remote collar on, bam, you can staff it. And then through repetition, the dog learns not to engage in it at all. Here it is slowed down. So what you'll see is the dog on the right, the black and white will get corrected first and right after the other dog. And boom, boom. That's it. We just turn away. They go, oh crap, I'm not supposed to do this. All right, here's my guys. We've got our little friends out at the fence again. So we'll see what we've got today. Break. Break. <laughs> No offense fighting. Got a correction for staring because we want to go ahead and get on top of that behavior. But big difference from yesterday. Big difference. I'm not going to be able to control their dog, so I've got to handle mine. And look, she's able to relax enough to play with her toy. Get your toy. Come on. Let's go. We can still enjoy our backyard. Good girl. I mean, it's not super enjoyable with all the barking, but whatever. I can still play with my dog and deal with the barking. Okay. No big deal. Awesome. So far, since that first day, the first video I took, they each got corrected that day. She has been corrected one time since. She has not. And this is what we've got. Okay. So it's not that hard. It's really not that hard to stop. So there you have it. A couple corrections. And now I'm able to continue enjoying spending time with my dog in my own backyard, my parents' backyard, as much as one can enjoy time outside with all the barking and yapping going on. Like, that's obnoxious, but I can't control that. All I can control is my side of things. I can control my dogs and my situation, and it's definitely way more enjoyable to maybe have to listen to their obnoxious barking while I can still engage with my dogs in the backyard versus having to, you know, time when I let my dogs out so that they're not fence fighting if I hadn't corrected the behavior if I couldn't get it under control, it's kind of miserable. It's obnoxious. It's obnoxious to anybody who's within hearing distance of it. And it's a really poor state of mind for my dogs to be in. I don't want my dogs to learn that that's appropriate behavior when they see other dogs on the other side of the fence. Yes, even dogs who are acting like fools at the fence. The dogs can't get to them. Um, and so I need my dogs to learn that even though they're up there making all sorts of noise, they're not going to come into the space. They're not going to bother you. This is a safe space. But I'm not going to be able to communicate that to my dogs or let them learn that if I allow them to fence fight. So you got to get it under control. And a correction is not that big a deal. It's two to three seconds out of that dog's life. Like you think about the rest of the day. So Belle got two corrections total. So four seconds in the last like 72 hours is not that much time to spend uncomfortable. Again, it's not gonna injure her, it's not gonna harm her. Is it uncomfortable? Hell yeah, I hope it's uncomfortable. It's supposed to be uncomfortable, that's the whole point. Because there's nothing comfortable that I can do to stop that behavior. There's plenty of people out there who don't believe in punishment, who say that you need to teach the dog focus work instead. And I can still do that, I can still teach the focus work instead, but I'm not going to be able to offer her anything that is going to distract her from those dogs if she's in that state of mind. So I've got to get that state of mind down to here, down to a level where she can focus on what it is that I'm doing. Then I can start rewarding good behavior like ignoring the dogs. So can you have a reward aspect to it? Absolutely, you totally can. But you've gotta stop the behavior first. Good luck taking this dog, and you could, there are people that would say, well, then just start farther back. But like my back door to that fence line is not a whole lot of space. And before they were corrected, my dogs were going nuts at the door. I had to address it at the door first. So 
Anyway, I digress. Point being, a couple seconds out of the dog's day, it's not a big deal, and you see that to them it wasn't a big deal either. It was like, oh, okay, not supposed to do that. And then we played with a toy. The dog's fine. The dog's mentally fine, and now I'm fine, and I can enjoy time with my dog, and it's awesome. So, again, if you're struggling with this and you have a remote collar, then apply it. Go up high. Don't be afraid to do that. If you don't have a remote collar, you can potentially fix the problem with a bonker. You can try a bonker. Um, I'm not going to get way into that in this video, but a bonker is just a wrapped up towel that you can use. Throw it at the dog to stop the behavior, but you know you have a lot of downsides to that. You can't correct from in the house. Even though I stepped outside for the sake of the video, um, you can correct this. I can go upstairs and watch the dogs and let them out and wait for them to fence fight, correct it from upstairs. And uh, so that's the beauty of the remote collar versus a bonker. You have to be within throwing distance and it's not always gonna be effective in the situation where the dog is that escalated. So um, that's another potential, though, if you don't have a remote collar, but remote collar training, guys, it's awesome. Love it. You guys take care.